frozen the bearing and I might need to use the press, uh, I might not, uh, might need to heat the case, might not. Um, I'm just going to try a variety of things, simplest things first, see what works, see if it's going to be easy or it's going to be hard, as all jobs turn out to be on this engine. But whatever it is, it is going to go. The whole point of cleaning these cases up, aside from getting any other fragments of metal out that might be floating around, was to see if I could see witness marks as to where all of that aluminium that got caught up in this journal might have come from. Well, when I say caught up in this journal, I mean caught up in this bearing that came out of this particular journal. And that's the lock tab there that I've bashed back in. Uh, that's the little cutout. But can you see? This uh, aperture here is chamfered. It's not chamfered all the way around. And when I took this engine apart, this bearing had spun. So I think that that little lock tab, I obviously bashed it back in, but it would have been sticking out. It spun round, because that's the clockwise direction of the rotation of this engine. <laughs> As given away by that arrow, not that you need it if you know which way your engine rotates. Uh, and I think that little tab then has basically gone all the way round and then started cutting into the material there. There's absolutely nothing else that would have taken that out apart from that tab. And then that material has ended up inside here, which is where, uh, where I dug it all out. Or some of it was actually floating around inside here. Uh, the rest of it was stuck to the end of the crank itself. So, I think we have found the source of the problem. I didn't see it before I cleaned the cases, it was just all too dirty. But that is clear and evident. Just going to give that a tap and then that should finish that little job up. Uh, this was the driver set I was using to do this. Um, these range from 18mm up to 74mm actually and if you're interested to know that was a 49mm diameter. Well today all I wanted to achieve was press the bearing into the journal there in the simplest way possible and I managed to do that just using my heat gun and a bearing driver set. It just means I didn't get to use my 6 ton press unfortunately but that's for another day. I was much more happy though that I found the source of the aluminium that caused that bearing to lock up in the first place so at least I can put that little mystery to bed. Anyway, in the next video I'm going to start to reassemble the whole thing and that is going to involve a little bit of cleaning but I'm not going to show that because it's just a little bit of cleaning and uh, when I get to the heads I will do a separate video on disassembling those, cleaning and inspecting them, putting them back together because uh, I'm probably going to let the valves in as well. But as I say, that will be a separate video. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. And I will see you on the next video.